exciting news. So as you can see, we're not at our usual filming spot and that's because we're filming at our home that we just bought. So these past few months, we've been doing a lot of property searches and we finally found the perfect home and made that purchase a few months ago. It's actually two homes. It's been a very long journey and in this video, we want to share with you the whole process from beginning to end and why we ended up choosing this particular property. Be sure to stay till the very end and we'll share with you what we plan to do next with this property. If you found any value in this video and the tips that we'll share, please be sure to like our video and subscribe to our channel. We do post about personal finance and investing and these types of topics every week. In this video, first we'll go over what we are looking for when we're searching for a property, how we found this really amazing property, and then we'll talk about how we prepared to finance this property, why we chose this property in particular. Lastly, we'll go over what we plan to do next with this property. First of all, when we're looking for properties, we want to make sure that we were able to meet a few of our criterias. And this is because we want our first property to be a great investment property. The things that we looked for were location. In terms of location, we're looking for anything that is close by to everything, has good transportation, is close to schools and universities, as well as close to the airport. A prime location will be great in the middle of a city. The next thing we'll look for is potential. Thinking about this as a long-term investment, we want to make sure that we're putting money towards a home that will appreciate and value in the next few years. And lastly, the income, which means how much are we able to get from rental income. That means that the average rental income in the neighborhood has to be high or growing every year. Our camera battery died, so I'm using my phone now. But we want to make sure we finish this video for you, so here we are. With I left off at how we found this property. Mm -hmm. Every day we looked on the market for any property available, and this meant that we understood the value of properties in this area, as well as how much the average cost of properties are. By doing this, we're able to understand whether a property is undervalued or overvalued when it goes on the market. Once we started looking, this actually took a few months and then we finally found this property, one of a few that was uh, what we we're looking for in terms of all the criteria we talked about. So once we found the perfect property, we put in the offer. Now before we could even put in the offer, we needed a pre-approval letter from our lender. The mortgage was going to be under my name. I had to provide the mortgage broker I was working with with some of my documents such as my pay subs, my W-2s, my tax returns, and my bank statement to show that I have income to pay for the down payment. Before we move on, be sure you hit that like button if you enjoyed this video so far and leave in the comments below if you have purchased a property or if you plan on purchasing one. Now let's go over the timeline. The particular location we wanted to purchase home is in Hawaii, which is where we grew up and we thought that it would be a good investment for us. In most states, the process is a lot quicker. You can probably close a home within 30 to 45 days at most and sometimes even sooner. But because in Hawaii, it's a bit slow, the mortgage process does take quite a while. From the time we made the offer to when we actually closed the deal, it was about five to six months long. So it's definitely not the greatest place for investors because of the slow turnaround times compared to other states. Um, and that's something you should keep in mind if you are purchasing a home in a slower state. So now on to reasons why we decided to choose this property. Well, in particular, the two houses structurally are perfect. The roofing, plumbing, electrical, they're all fine. And there are some cosmetic changes that needs to be done or fixed. Especially in the second house, there are a lot of changes or updates, updates that needs to be done. Which is the house we're currently in, as you can see, with the door taken down. But the minor changes shouldn't take too much effort. Because of that, it makes a really great investment property. Now, because there are two houses on this one property, it makes up almost half an acre of land, there's potential to split up this property into two properties that can then be sold in the future separately. Which gives this property a lot of growth potential. And in terms of location, this is in the middle of the city and it's also close to a lot of commercial property, which means that this area can also be commercialized in the future. And because it is in the middle of the city, there's also a lot of rental income potential. 
And as you can see, this property meets all of the criteria that we had uh, when we were initially looking for properties to invest in. If you want to learn more about purchasing a property with a mortgage, check out this other video we have linked in the description for a step-by-step -step guide into purchasing your first property. Now let's talk a little bit about the property and what it looks like. So like we said before, it is two single family homes on a half acre lot. And both homes are three bedroom, two bathrooms. Both homes have very similar layouts in terms of where the bedrooms are placed and the bathrooms. The front house is about 1,100 square feet. The second house is about 1,300 square feet, which is a tad bigger. Now a little bit about the actual price of this beautiful home. When we initially found the home, the asking price was $499,000. Within this year, it was listed for up to $530,000. And so when we first saw it at 499, it was a pretty good deal. As we've done our research, we know that in this neighborhood, two properties on one lot this size is worth this value. So it's right on target. And so during the whole process, we worked with our real estate agent who was able to help us negotiate the offer to a much lower rate. We're back, our phone died, so now we're on to the second phone. <laughs> A real estate agent that we worked with was able to negotiate back and forth with the seller's agent and we eventually got the price down to $440,000, which is almost $60,000 less than the asking price. So this is what we're planning to do with this property. What we're planning to do is rent out the front house uh, as a rental property and live in the back house for a year. And then after that, rent out the back house. So having both properties generate rental income in the future. So within five to 10 years, we have quite a few options to what we can do with the property. Depending on the market, we can choose to sell the property as a whole. So both uh, houses and one property and sell it. Or we can decide to split the property in half and sell it as separate single family homes. And another option is we can do a 1031 exchange for another property. The last option we could possibly do is try to refinance a home or do a cash out refinance so that we can get more cash out to purchase other properties. Now these are all very good ideas which we can share with you more of if you're interested, leave it in the comments below. So now let's go into tips for purchasing your first home. Now this is what we have learned from going through the process of purchasing our first home, including the struggles, the hassle, as well as finally getting the house keys. The first and most important is to get a good real estate agent. I don't care what people are saying where you don't need a real estate agent, but you do need one because they understand the laws, they can do the negotiations, and to sellers, you are someone who's very interested in purchasing this property when you have a real estate agent on your side. Our real estate agent really helped us in the whole process. She was not only able to negotiate up to $60,000 off of the asking price, she was also able to negotiate a few things for the seller to complete on the property, including tenting the house, which can cost up to thousands of dollars, as well as some electrical fixtures in the first house. Something that you can ask for if you have a really good real estate agent who's on your side. The next tip is to get a pre-approval letter from your mortgage broker before you start putting in offers for homes. And the reason for this is you don't want to delay the process and by having this letter, a lot of sellers are more willing to talk to you because they see that you are ready to put money down on this home. Another reason why you even want a pre-approval letter is because you will know exactly how much money you can afford. In the pre-approval letter, it will tell you what price of the property you can actually afford. So you can start actually looking for homes within that price range. And the next tip is to do your research and be on the market every day so you have a better understanding of the value of property in your market. And by doing this, you're able to see when properties are undervalued or overvalued. Mm -hmm. That way you're not paying more than you should and you know when a good deal comes on the market when it does. Lastly, follow our channel, of course. We share with you tips and tricks on how to purchase your first home, our journey in investing in real estate, and how you can do it too. If you're interested in investing in real estate, how you can purchase your first home, be sure to subscribe to our channel. We do post about personal finance and investing every week. And if you found any value in this video, please give it a thumbs up and comment below what you want to learn more about. If you're interested in learning about whether you should invest or save your money, check out this video here.